Afghans rapidly losing hope after more than eight years of war. Life is getting worse every day, one lawmaker says. These are sad days in Afghanistan and in Kabul. Even a traffic jam can provoke a comment on this Islamic nation's dismal state which most people here believe is at its bleakest since the U.S. invaded to topple the Taliban in 2001. It's a striking sentiment when you consider it comes after more than eight years of international intervention at least sixty billion dollars in foreign aid and the lives of thousands of foreign troops and many more Afghan civilians. The Barack Obama administration is hoping somehow to reverse that trend by pouring 30,000 more American troops into the conflict over the next few months. But the more soldiers they send here, the worse it gets, said a 19-year-old carpet seller. In the year after the Taliban fell, international forces numbered a modest 16,000. But today, that number is already well over 100,000. And the insurgency, whatever have you call it, has mushroomed along with it. War's impacts spread. The war, once mostly limited to the Pakistan border, has touched nearly every corner of the country. It has also penetrated the frontier-like capital, where car bombings or other spectacular attacks like the October storming of a guest house filled with United Nations staff make the news every couple of weeks. Of course, it wasn't supposed to be this way. When the Taliban were overthrown in the wake of the September 11th attacks, aid groups, experts, and Afghans themselves all believed that the nation was finally emerging from a quarter century of war. In retrospect, our reality, there wasn't much of a break. In those days, people had hope, but unfortunately, everything has turned upside down since then. People expected things to go forward, but we've just been sliding back, and when they stand up, they fall back down again. The irony is that so much has changed in Kabul. A vast sea of blown out buildings in the west of the city has been completely rebuilt. Multi-story shopping malls encased in glass symbolize a newfound prosperity. Towering above streets lined with travel agencies, internet cafes, and even Afghan fried chicken, a local fast food chain. Newly connected electricity lines light up mountainsides ringing the capital, whose population has tripled in the last eight years to 4.5 million as millions of refugees returned. People can finally talk openly about what's gone wrong. They can criticize the government and warlords, point out corruption, but unfortunately nobody is listening. Opium trade booming. Indeed, the news today is the same as it was eight years previous. There is just more of it. Car bombs and rockets rock the capital city. Civilians die accidentally in U.S. airstrikes. Afghan security forces in serious or dire need of training. And the opium trade is booming. And just like 2001, President Hamid Karzai is derided as the mayor of Kabul by critics who say his authority doesn't extend much further than the city limits. It's a disaster, said a lawmaker who came in a distant third in the country's botched August election, which was marred by fraud so widespread a third of Karzai's ballots were thrown out. The situation 
is getting worse every day for ordinary Afghans. Approximately 80% of the country is without electricity and unemployment is around 60%. Many families can only afford to eat once a day and corruption is so rampant it's practically legal. People ask what has democracy brought? Besides helping keep, keeping warlords accused of war crimes in power, the answer is insecurity. Guerrilla attacks have made even provinces surrounding the capital unsafe. Downtown protective blast walls have grown larger outside U.S. and United Nations faculties, and some streets have been closed to public traffic. Helmeted soldiers peek out of sandbagged guard posts at government ministries, among other things. The U.S. Congressional Research Service said in a recent report that foreign assistance pledged to Afghanistan since 2001 has topped $58 billion and $38 billion of it from the U.S. alone. But what happened to all this money? Has garbage been cleaned up? Have all the streets been paved? Many think some of those sons or some of those monies have been diverted to places like the city's Shapur neighborhood where the powerful clique Washington brought to power eight years ago bulldozed dozens of crumbling mud brick homes occupied by squatters and divvied the land up among cronies. Residents deride the gaudy mirrored mansions as poppy palaces because they are believed to have also been constructed in part with money from the drug trade. We've built a lot of buildings, said a lawmaker, but we've lost a lot of hope. So in reality, things are definitely not getting better in Afghanistan. According to the people, or most of the people who live there, or the lawmakers, it's getting worse daily after more than eight years of this war and how much longer will this war go on what is there to win exactly and how will they know when they have won and these are more signs of the end times transition days something much bigger is going on here and the transition is an ongoing continuing daily process and there are many signs